Hello, good evening and welcome to The Majority Show. This is Scotland's number one politics and chat from an anti-national perspective. We are going out live on Twitter, which is now called X, uh, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you all for coming in to watch. I'm the host, Mark Devlin, and I'm here tonight with my co-hosts, uh, David Griffiths and Mary Devlin. How are you both tonight? Well, I'm doing very well, thank you. Very and good. I'm doing, I'm doing similarly well. Yes, thank you. And hello, everyone. That's very good. Thank you there. Mary, what are you going to be talking about tonight? Well, tonight I'll be talking about how businesses are concerned about higher taxes in Scotland. <laughs> right. Okay. David, what have you got for us? Well, tonight I will be examining the SNP's continued fixation with the presentation of a supposedly agreed party line. Oh, okay. Mm. Right. And I'll be talking about non crimes. Uh, and uh, Hamza's police state. And I'll have a good old ra anti nationalist rant. So I hope you'll bear with me for that. Very exciting. And Remember, of on, course, we have <laughs> Zoomer of the Week. Yay! Okay, so we'll be back with all that and much more in just a moment. Right, thank you all for being with us tonight on Scotland's number one politics and thank chat you. majority show. Um, our aim is a better Scotland without the toxic nationalism that is strangling Scotland's potential. We hope that is your aim as well. Here tonight with David and Mary, and we're really glad you can join us because it is going to be a really great show, show tonight and possibly another record breaker. Who knows? As always, a huge thanks to UK Union Voice and United Against Separation Facebook pages for their support. And of course, many of you are watching for their tonight and to see the comments are beginning to come in already. And remember, sharing is caring. The number one thing you can do is to like the show on YouTube to build up the reach. Even if you don't subscribe, drop a like. But if you can subscribe, please do so. Increase the reach of the show at the click of a button. Very good. And uh, now is the ideal time to get yourself a majority mug or abolish holiday t-shirt. This is it. They're flying off the shelves. Annoy your enemy and delight your... <laughs> annoy your enemies, not enemy. Well, annoy your enemy anyway. <laughs> if you only have one or if multiple enemies, you can annoy them all with this uh, great t-shirt. And I think I'll be putting a wee thing here. If you buy something we will and send us a photo, we will feature it on our Twitter page there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Right, uh, fantastic. Indeed. Bet these messages off. All right, okay, so what have we got? Uh, where are we at? Um, of course, every part of these uh, uh, gifts uh, you could, that you can buy for yourself or you can use as gifts, you can um, send a message and support the show. Sorry. And we also have mouse mats and mugs at reasonable prices. Oh, very good. <laughs> and whatever you buy sends a message and helps support the show. And don't forget, I'll just put it up, we do have a 10% off coupon. Right, very good. So one. don't pay full price when you can get 10% off. Right, okay, so we're going to rattle through the show here. And um, what have we got? First, I want to show you a little short message from uh, Dan Wooten, who is a big supporter of what we do. Many of you will know Dan from GB News, and um, uh, he left there a while back. And since his exoneration and various charges, he's back with a vengeance, uh, <laughs> so to speak. And he is going to set up his own news channel. As regular viewers of GB News or uh, will know, he has been very much against scheming surgeon as he calls her, and in fact invited us once down to the show, or me down once down to the show. Well, it was to, the night that Sturgeon resigned. That's right, and we still were on there, so you can see that was mm -hmm. on the YouTube there. But anyway, let's, Dan's going to give you a message. Hello to the good people of the majority. I've been spending lots of time in Scotland since I left GB News. My partner is from Prestwick, and I have to say, we've got to fight for what is the best nation the nation of my favourite food in the world, haggis. But in all seriousness, 
please do follow me on my new journey, Dan Wooten Outspoken. You can find me at www.danwootenoutspoken.com or the links are on my YouTube channel, on my X page, because the mainstream media in this country is corrupt. They are behind the SNP. They are not reporting the truth even now about what's going on in Scotland. And my goodness, look at the microscope that should be put under the mess that Scheming Sturgeon has left and the new messes that Homes Are Useless is creating, let alone with the hate crime reporting bill, which makes me feel like it's very likely at some point I'll be locked up and maybe J.K. Rowling will be my cellmate. But in all seriousness, thank you for keeping the faith. Thank you for continuing to fight to keep Scotland as part of the United Kingdom. We are the majority. We may be the silence majority, but the fight back is on. Well, very good, Dan. Oh. That was great. Thank yeah. you very much for that message there. And I was supposed to put a link in the description, but there will be one. Uh, I'll do that just after the end of the show, or maybe it'll be up on one of these wee corners. Can't point. It's quite hard to point the right direction. So <laughs> it's kind of the opposite direction. Okay. Anyway, right. So uh, please do support Dan on his channel. Also link to that on his uh, on our social media as well. Do you, I mean, do you have anything to say about Dan, uh, De David? I think he's an interesting guy, um, and I'm very pleased that all these allegations have come to nothing. He's the guy who uh, wrote the story about me, me um, predicting the demise of Sturgeon. So uh, yeah, uh, on TV that is. Um, so no, I, I, uh, he he seems very passionate. He seems to to mean exactly what he says, and I think it's terrific to have a, a high profile uh, guy like that on side. It's great. So I wish him well. Yeah, it's good. it's good. I mean, it's, it's quite positive energy, I think. Yeah. A bit like us, we are quite friendly and cheery as well. Mm -hmm. And when you look at some of these nationalist uh, uh, podcasts and stuff, it's all doom and gloom. Good, I see. That is and quite good. he says he loves the show. He loves what we do. That's yeah. the show, yeah. So that's good. That's good as well. Right. On to the news of the week. Um, last week on this show, we talked about the introduction of Humza's hate crime bill, which will go live on April 1st. How appropriate. Um, at the time when I mentioned it, or we talked about it, it seemed like few people knew about this part of the law, which was all about the police keeping secret lists. In fact, it was a surprise to us, and that's why I brought it up on the show last week. But the very next day, it uh, blew up when Murdo Fraser um, basically said that he was going to... Uh, I don't have the point. Was that? Uh, he said he was going to uh, take Police Scotland to court because they had put his name on a secret list. Now, Murdo Fraser is a Conservative MP for Mid Scotland and Fife Region. And um, his non crime was s s identif saying that identifying as non binary was identifying as a cat. And this was in response to an article by Susan Delgetti about the Scottish government publishing, and I'm not joking about this, a non-binary action plan. So Murdo said in his uh, tweet, he said, um, choosing to identify as non-binary is as valid as choosing to identify as a cat. I'm not sure governments should be spending time on action plans for either. Now, this seems to be quite an innocuous statement. Um, but a member of the public, known as Snitchy McSnitchface, reported Murdo to the police. <laughs> now, we're not sure if this complaint was about the perceived insult to non-binary people or to cats. But, <laughs> but judging by our Well, my cat, cat was offended. <laughs> judging by our cat, they're not too bothered about hate crimes. I mean, our cat was not... Our cat know, doesn't give up. It just wants to eat her face, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway, or, I mean, it could be targeted as dogs. Do some dogs want to identify as cats? Or well, maybe that's it. Maybe if, if, if Murdo had said it's like identifying as a dog, there wouldn't have been a problem. Who knows? Uh, goodness knows. Mm. Oh, yeah, I found the, 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 the thing here. So that's in the BBC there. Um, the clip. So um, where are we at on this? So... Um, well, here? someone's asking while, we, while you're looking around. <laughs> is it true, David, that Labour supported the hate law? Yes, it's true. Lib Dems also. Uh, I think I believe one Conservative MSP did, but yeah, Labour and Lib Dems, I believe, uh, whipped their MSPs to vote for it. Yet another baffling decision by these two parties, who, let's not forget, are relying on votes from people like us, if they're going to make any dent at all. In well, the, it's not just the people like us, they're relying from ordinary people. 
Indeed. I mean, I'm mere ordinary people. That's what we're supposed to represent. And it's ordinary right. opinion. It's out there. The majority opinion is right. like, what you know, so why are these, why were they doing that? It just seems uh, a real problem. Yeah. But the real problem here was that Police Scotland didn't tell Murdo that he had been reported. Yes. And he only found out later when a separate complaint was made to the Scottish Parliament's Ethical Standards Committee citing the police reference number. So basically, they didn't tell him about it. It was on the secret list. And then it was used against him because, yep. um, well, anyway, we'll come to that in a second. He accused the force of breaching the Human Rights Act, the Data Protection Act, and the Equality Act, as well as breaching the hate crime national guidance, and called on the force to make changes to the law as well as to delete the hate incident. This mm. is police Scotland attacking free speech, but more sinister than that, he said. My tweet wasn't pointing a finger at an individual. It was critical of Scottish government policy. David, have you committed any non-crimes lately? Well, um, I've got an awful feeling that I might have done. Um, I was just uh, I was making notes on this earlier. Every time, as I think most Scots do, every time I get off a bus, I say thanks, mate, or whatever, to the driver. Oh. I've got a terrible feeling that I may be accidentally misgendering people by calling them mate. So what about guys then? What about you guys? Exactly. That could be you guys. Could be, I'll have to come up with a a, a non-binary way of addressing the bus driver because who who am I to uh, misgender someone, albeit inadvertently? Because often you know. No, so, but it may be getting recorded. Well, this is the truth because they, they can see my pass, so they can. There's probably whenever I come to get my pass renewed, they'll probably say, "Sorry, too many hate crimes. You're going to have to pay for your bus travel now." So I, I've got an awful feeling I might have done, but well, who can tell? Because they're not going to tell me. So unless I, you know, I go and apply for something and I get knocked back on the basis of uh, too high a score, a bit like a credit rating, really. Maybe that's what. Well, it is. that's what they talk the about. Social course. rating. Yeah, the social yeah, rating in China, China and so on. I went to a meeting last night. Actually, that was one of the subjects oh, wow. of discussion. In fact, and and they try to bring that in. It's all about restricting people's movement and um, using uh, what they call the uh, low, low social credit. Or yeah, something? so so called low emission zones, but actually local exclusion zones. Yeah, really. But anyway, that's for that's a topic for another day. I mean, I think this is how it works to some extent. They choose the most insipid comment, right? He's mm -hmm. not actually saying anything, really. That's uh, in any way controversial. But because of that then that means it chills everything else, right? Because if they can get action on that, when he yeah. just said, you know, uh, cats are not cats are non-binary or whatever it is, that type type of thing, then then what's the what's the hope for anyone who says anything beyond that? What you just said there, you know, you just called the bus driver uh, mate. Yeah. Oh my god, send him off to the gulag. So we're basically criminalizing Almost any discussion of politics. Yeah. That's not that's not hate. It's, it's how could that possibly be described as being a hate crime? It's not even against an individual, as he no. says. Well, it's not actually being categorised as a hate crime. It's being categorised as a non-crime, yeah. oh, yeah. which is a new form of crime. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, that's very true. Now, remember last week, we, we I talked extensively about this guy, Duncan Hothersall, who's a Labour Act activist, who said that misgendering someone would be logged by Police Scotland, and then according to him, nothing would happen. But this incident with Murdo basically shows that something did happen. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, so if, if nothing was going to happen, why record it at all? So yeah. it, this the secret report was still used against Murdo, and in fact, the secret list of non crimes can be used by the police and other go government agencies. It turns out um, to you know, if you're applying for a job with children or so on, then that can possibly come to light. Uh, and so basically, you have, if you have a bunch of non crimes that are basically reported on you by people you don't know who who, who reported you, and who are not, of course, they're not actually crimes, then. Then they're used in a secret police record yep. against you, and you don't know what, if that's on there. And you, how do you get access to it, right? I mean, David, what do you think of this? I mean, it's I it seems it's, it's, incredible. It's, it's extraordinary. It really is classic East Germany or communist Eastern Bloc tactics. Completely secret files on people. We know that the SNP keeps databases. We know famously Alan Smith let that slip. But to, to do this, for the police to be complicit in this, in fact, actively involved in this, this is really, really sinister stuff now, guys. This is really going through the looking glass. By Why have we had no reassurances Absolutely. from the police about uh, about this uh, as well? The only uh, Now, um, Hamza Yousaf, the world's highest paid hostage negotiator, he decided <laughs> to stick his oar in and claimed that the non-crimes, not uh, don't worry about the non-crimes, they're only going to be used for statistics. 
Mm. All right, here, here, let's have a listen. In terms of incidents and hate crime incidents, it's important that they are recorded because what it does is it gives police an idea of where there might be spikes in hatred. That behaviour might not be criminal, but they can then see a pattern that are simply done so police can see if there's a rise in anti-Semitism, for example, or a rise in uh, uh, homophobia. Uh, right, right across the country, it's important that police are able to monitor any patterns of hatred that might emerge. Well, I know where there's a rise in anti-Semitism. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank. Don't have to look far be- be- beyond his, the end of his nose there, do they? Well, yes, and um, that's definitely a thing here. But here, the police's job isn't to keep reports on people for non-crimes. It's to actually go to solve actual crimes. Well, no, they've, they've stopped doing that, haven't you heard? What's that? The police are giving up on... Um, actually solving real crimes oh i see what you mean yeah yes, okay. no they've said they can't they don't really have time for that anymore <laughs> right. um so unless there's cctv footage oh, really? um like robberies and so on burglaries or whatever if there's no cctv footage yep. then they're not going to even investigate it because they're too busy filling in non-crime reports and keeping statistics <laughs> of the non-crimes <laughs> <laughs> to actually be able yeah, to, I mean, this is, is it's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah. you know, here, here Hums is saying uh, that behaviour might not be crimi- criminal, but they can see a pattern. <laughs> what, what's that all about? It's, that's just what the, that's exactly something you might see of here from mm. in the you know Eastern Germany or something yeah. like that. East yeah. Germany, isn't it? Okay, what that type of thing here, and the problem here is that they say the police now come and say. Uh, this is the best I could find on this. They say hate incidents are not recorded against alleged perpetrators. Recording is victim focused, and the process has been part of policing for many years. It helps us monitor tensions within communities, enabling appropriate police responses, and helps to build community confidence. But that's obviously not true because, in Murdo Fraser's case, the victim, supposed victim, took the police number, report yeah. number, and then used that to m- make further complaints, basically saying this. This allegation that they made, the fact that it was recorded by the police, was enough for the Scottish Parliament to do an ethics uh, investigation on him. That, if that's not chilling, I don't know what is as well, well right? Well, well, well. well, I'd just like to bring up the point because we're talking about you know China and how they have you have this um, kind of social credit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, with your normal uh, mm. credit rating, at least you can log in. To the different services and see what your credit rating is. Good point. And you can, you know, you get alerts on your phone if, if anything pops up, if it says that, you know, someone's been searching or you've been, you know, looking for credit or something like that. But with this new law, we don't we don't even have that. We're not even, it, it's not like we've got an account, like our NHS account or something like that. We well, haven't been want, told. I mean, that's... We haven't been told. We can't look up to see what our non well, crimes are. are. Yeah, like as we said last week, today I didn't, you know, steal a bicycle. Mm-hmm. You know, so in what? Well, I've been doing that every day, Mark. So, oh, God wow, knows. You've more non crimes than me. <laughs> That'd be on a thing, yeah. But this is the problem. I think basically to make everyone a criminal. Everyone's a yeah. criminal or a mm. non criminal. I mean, you can almost. It's like oh, I don't know. It's it's probably a book in there somewhere about being non criminal. I suppose there is a book called okay, Kafka's The Trial. Yes. yes. Exactly that, where a man is accused of something he doesn't know what he's accused of yep. and continually goes around in circles and circles until I don't know what happens at the end. But I can't remember what happens at the end. <laughs> Someone else can. Uh, I'll have. He kills movie, himself, no? Probably. Oh, no, spoiler, into, alert. spoiler alert. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> probably, but wouldn't you? And you, if you were in that type of situation, because Murdo Fraser uh, is a politician and he has access to be a platform, right? Yep. And he can say, you look at this, this is something. Uh, bad has happened to him and perhaps we might have a platform as well maybe maybe not when you take a come and take away your computers and all that and say mm-hmm. this is you know part of the crime that you did then you know maybe we don't have a platform but what about you know the people in this in the schemes or the people in the you know other activists and people who just speak up in the street or speak to their friends they don't have any resources what are they going to do? Yeah. You know, they can't look up this record. I mean, the very fact that you could have such a record, Mary, I think is against the principles in, in, in uh, of freedom in the UK, such as they are anyway. Um, but Well, that doesn't seem to be mattering much at the moment, does it? No, it doesn't really. But, I mean, the question I have for you, David, is uh, why are the police not really standing up against this? Well, I mean, Surely they should be doing something. Indeed, this is what's troubling me, to be honest, because we're seeing the drift of police Scotland into very, very heavily politicised force acting at the behest of the government, the, the elected government. And it, it's the, the, the police in Scotland appear to have embraced wholly 
the SNP Green obsession with enforcing legislation which appears to be designed solely for the benefit of people from these protected categories. And I find that unbelievable. It's like a hair, a single hair on the tail of the dog, um, wag, uh, on the tail of the tail, wagging the dog, right. rather than the other way around, because it's so tiny These these the, um, in terms of uh, the, the, the proportion of the population. But maybe that's the whole point of it. But what, what I found really troubling was there was a, um, uh, an, an article in The Express talking about uh, the SNP had previously, or rather the police Halton, I should say, uh, had previously talked about recorded police warning crimes, which are supposedly this new category of crime where they, you won't actually be, um, uh, what's the word, prosecuted, but it will be recorded that you've done something. And they gave a guideline, and this is a guideline, guys. I and mean, this is really, really sinister to me. Um, if you've got John walking down the street and John meets Jim, and John punches Jim, that will be logged as a recorded police warning crime, and John will only be, get a warning. However, if John says to Jim, hello, sir, and in so doing misgenders him, that's a crime, and he will be prosecuted for doing so, or he may be prosecuted for doing so. So what's a, a recorded police warning crime? An assault. What's an actual crime? Calling somebody by the wrong uh, affectation, which might uh, imply well, that you think he's a... That, an obvious lesson from that. We have to go out and batter everyone we see. Exactly. That's fine. <laughs> and, you know, but and just don't make sure... And do to them. <laughs> yeah, make sure we're them <laughs> while we're doing so. <laughs> <laughs> this, I mean, that's that so inverse, I mean, yeah. perverse. I suppose <laughs> this whole thing is very, very scary stuff. Though I mean, if, if there was, I uh, mean, you could say it's laughable, but it's not. I no, mean, it's it's, it's it's extremely worrying and disturbing. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's just because you don't know what you could say anything and anything. That's the point. This is the if someone's if you offended, say, you could be guilty. You know, if you if you say something about bisexual people, you so you say you know yep. well whatever. Make a joke, like say I'm not going to make a joke because I'm not a comedian. But it's not difficult to make jokes about any category. I mean, it just kills anyone. Yeah. And if we're talking, you know, Murdo just said this most innocuous thing, as I said, and that just sets a floor. Right, it says you can't say anything, even if it's innocuous, because someone's going to get it for that. Yeah, and I've right. seen examples even before this hate crime uh, came uh, legislation came out of people being um, uh, arrested for tweets and so on. Uh, and that's also all across uh, all across the company. But I think a lot of this seems to be driven by a moral panic. The as we showed last week, um, there's a huge amount. The idea that there's a huge amount of hate crime in Scotland is actually false. Um, much of it, it seems to be led by the idea that there's a huge increase in hate for transgender people. And as Mary went and did the research last week, it turns out that there's only uh, 55 uh, hate crime incidents against uh, transgender people uh, last uh, in between 2022 and 2023, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it doesn't stop people like Mary Hunter, uh, failed SNP candidate, uh, from coming in and discussing this and saying this. I mean, she says in here, I read a thing saying hate crime legislation will just result in more hate against trans people. And I don't know how that could actually be possible. Um, for such a small group of people, less than 1% of the population, the level of hate against them is already off any kind of scale. Is I mean, this, really? No, but it's not. I mean, 55. Now, Every well, they might say that transgender people don't report. All but, it, the... but it doesn't really matter, does it? Because basically that has what has actually been reported, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to say if of the crimes that are reported. Um, so, And in fact, that number 55 was even fewer than the, the, the before. And while 55 is too many, there are always, people, there are always going to be people who hate, right? Yes. People who make a mistake or whatever. It is. And in a fight, you just say, you're a wee whatever. Yeah, these things happen. And uh, does, does that aggravate the offence? Perhaps not. They're maybe already in a fight. Uh, does, you know, there's, there's plenty of laws for that, I suppose. But why are millions of us being published, uh, punished for this 55 well, well, the, the, this is the, this is a question. As I was just saying, fifty-five people is nothing in a year in Scotland. That's absolute. That's an infinitesimal amount. But laws do exist already. It's not like there there aren't already laws to deal with uh, any hate acts. But why does it have to be that we're taking all this action, spending all this effort, and diverting all this police resource to one particular category? Who, how does Mar Mary Hunter know that the level of hate against trans people is off the scale? Who's she to say that? What's that based on? What records or what data analysis or empirical study is that based on? How does she know who hates trans people? Right? It's just, there's an assumption here that we're all guilty. 
It's a bit like critical yeah. race theory. It's the same yeah. sort of thing. It's like you're um, straight, therefore you must hate trans people. Well, I think hate speech, that's where hate speech laws come from, actually. They come from the idea that everyone is guilty and everyone is a criminal. So we will ensure that in law because everyone says stuff that, I mean, you have to say things. You have to, people, only the most insipid and boring people don't don't challenge anything around them. And I mean, even in our society, challenging the SNP um, was actually difficult to do beforehand. Now we can stand up and many people in the street are doing it and talking and so on. Uh, I was at this thing last night and whenever the SNP were mentioned, there was a, you know, negatively, there was, you know, lots of clapping and applause. So it's, it moves along, but I mean, we could, they could easily con- 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 make any kind of that political discussion as, uh, as being a crime. Yep. Well, that's the intent, right? Everyone's guilty, and then let the law sort them out. That's not the way it should be working. We're all innocent, you know, perhaps. Um, okay, where are we at here? Well, Mark Zegfeld's just made a comment that what about women's rights, which aren't protected in exactly. the law? Well, well, the, 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 the claim is that's that they're going to have a totally separate uh, bill to deal solely with women's rights. Really? What, what? When? <laughs> exactly. And how, what about trans women? I thought we were told that trans women and women are indistinguishable. So you're dealing over here with the trans uh, community and separately over here you're dealing with women, but aren't they the same guys? That's what the whole gender recognition reform bill was about. And that's what Sturgeon famously got herself tied up in knots over. So I mean, you can easily just look up the results on here. Hate Crime Scotland here. Uh, just look just look for this. There's a, there's the information there. You can see that race incidents are, d- are declining. That's the biggest one, in fact. It's not mm-hmm. barely mentioned. And here, sexual orientation ones are up. Um, religion is the same. Disability up a little bit. And transgender identity is barely even registering mm-hmm. on that particular graph. Um, where are we at? Oops, but they're just going with imagination, basically. Yeah. Well, that's the they're thing. Imagining. So it places all speech in the hands of the police sets up secret lists that can be used against political opponents and is frankly disgusting. Just say a final word. If you think that we can beat this from the inside, I don't think we can. And if you think the next lot will be any better, uh, as David pointed out or the person in the chat pointed out, Labour voted for this as well. Um, so good luck thinking they're going to change And Go ahead, David. Well, exactly. I mean, doesn't this just go back to what we, All for Unity, said three years ago? You really want to vote for parties who can who, who who you don't know what they're going to back. You know, do you really trust Labour? At the time, people said to us, "No, we can't vote for you because it might it might uh, impact negatively the number of pro UK MSPs who get returned." Well, you got what you wanted, guys, and this is what happened. So maybe next time a party comes along and says, "If you vote for us, we guarantee we won't vote for any ridiculous legislation." Maybe listen to them. That might yeah, be yeah. Well, that's the thing, but yeah. I think it can't be solved within the system, and I think the only way to do that is well, to, my, is to I, Mary, look, give me, let me, let me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, no comments right, go ahead, Mary. Sorry. No, I was going to say I don't know why the, the Scottish office do we still have that? Why they haven't stepped in, or why UK Westminster well, was, is, is think, not stepping well, in? Yes. No. I mean, they could they could issue a section thirty five, couldn't they? They could do. Yes, yeah. They should, and perhaps they will do that. Uh, when have they got? To a few days. Uh, looking at the yeah, calendar no. there, right? Three days or something. Right, we will be more actually have more information about our abolish Hollywood campaign in a few weeks as we develop that a bit more. Next up, we're going to I'm going to, there's going to be a bit of a rant, so if you bear with us, prepare um, ever go make the tea if you <laughs> and I'll be, be uh, back we'll be back in a second. Right, nice mm-hmm. actually. Actually, I thought the whole thing was a rant. The whole show, you mean? yeah. <laughs> Reason debate. It's just more of a personal <laughs> one here. Um, I've noticed in the past uh, trend in Scottish social media um, that uh, many XM. Ex SNP people and a few other people on our side are being praising people like Wings Over Scotland for yeah. fighting against the SNP's gender and hate laws. It's very tiresome to me to see these ex SNP nationalists try to claim that they had no part in the current shit show because they enabled it. Now, I do want to make it clear that I don't count people here who say, who are ex-SNP and say, I made a mistake and now I wouldn't vote for them or any nationalist party and the whole idea of Scottish independence is a disaster. These people acknowledge their mistake and have moved on. But other people 
I've been saying um, they like wings because he changes opinion on the SNP as you know, as if it was one guy changing his opinion. And fa- when in fact, wings created the most powerful political bloc in Scotland and spent years lying to give power to the politicians and authoritarian nationalist ideology that got us to this point, and he's still spreading it. It's he is no hero. No, these people are praising a guy. The, these he people are praising the guy who started the fire for trying to put it out. Well, while they criticise us and people like us, many of you out there who yeah. knew he was an arsonist all the time, while we also point out that he's still pouring petrol on the fire. Now, I set up the majority to fight nationalism because it seemed to me that people had forgotten that nationalism is of itself a toxic ideology. Many people, all credit to them, were fighting the SNP and a referendum and all kinds of issues. And those fights go on. Um, but to me, these are all symptoms of the disease, which is nationalism itself. The hate crime, other authoritarian laws, all symptoms of nationalism. So it's a false logic to say the SNP was taken over by authoritarians. The SNP, like all nationalist parties, is intrinsically authoritarian. Just look at their code of conduct, you know, which says that no criticism is allowed. Just look at these laws, and that that's going to happen irrespective of whether it's the SNP or ALBA or the Greens. Nationalism is, by definition, authoritarianism, and supporting nationalism in any form has led us to where we are today. Because the idea of worshipping a country is inherently against the individual when the good of the country is more important than the rights of the individual, that we end up exactly where we are today. And if we had independence now, can you imagine it? Would it be any better? Would it make any difference if Hamza or Sturgeon or Samud was in place? Absolutely not. They're all authoritarians who think they, they know better than the majority of Scots. If they ignore the majority of us, what hope does any individual have? Many of us saw this from the beginning. So to see people like Wings protest the symptoms that they caused while still arguing for the disease that they still support makes me sick. And they are not heroes. They're greedy, divisive incompetents who have used the toxic ideology of nationalism to gain power. And worst of all, Scots let them. Scotland will never be able to move on until Scots realise that their own nationalism was the cause of our current problems. And that's my rant. Bravo. Well said, well said, well said. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. One um, comment I would make is the only reason, the principal reason Wings criticises the SNP these days is because, firstly, he's aghast at the nonsense that they are trying to spread by way of legislation. But the only reason he's annoyed about it is because he feels that that, that will make the, the likelihood of independence a little more remote. If they were coming up with stuff that he found more um, sensible, he would be lauding them. Trust me, he hasn't gone off the idea of independence by a smidgen, not at all. He's only annoyed because the, he, as he sees it, the SNP is making the prospect of independence less likely, whereas he's a big Alba fan. And of course, Alba won independence tomorrow. So Wings is only annoyed well, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's a good point. Their idea is even more authoritarian. Sure. It's, you know, to, to basically have a de- unilateral declaration of uh, independence, exactly. yeah, which, sure. which basically ignores the majority of Scots who are democratic, uh, yeah. democratically voted in the referendum. Exactly. I mean, how authoritarian is that? And yet <laughs> he's there going, oh, these terrible authoritarians in the SNP. <laughs> I don't yeah. think so. It's the whole thing is intrinsically. This is my point. The whole thing is intrinsically authoritarian. You don't join the SNP to, you know, spread individual freedom because you you're interested in the country. That's it. And this is the big problem we have here is that we don't have enough people. And the other side of that is you don't. Most people who are interested in individual freedom don't run for government that much because they want to be left alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is the thing, and we've got these people. They are trying to claim that they are trying to claim that they are somehow they're I don't know, I suppose their shit doesn't stink when they're sitting in a pile of manure and and and, and still crap onto it. I mean really <laughs> Uh, <laughs> think about that, you might. Well, that's, 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 Sorry, I'll we'll finish your dinner. Well, <laughs> as Alan Jack has said, uh, they fanned the flames and now they're a bit worried about how high they are. Yeah, that's quite. Right. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, they could have got the power, but the good thing was that the majority of Scots stood up against them. But then, yeah. even then, they tried to beat us down. They tried to be, really tried to beat us down, and and now we're managing maybe just to get out of, out of it. And we have to reverse this mistake, abolish Stalag Holyrood. Yes, right. perhaps. 
Well, on that very subject, let's not forget the, the accusation that's been levelled at, I think, all of us, uh, the three of us anyway, is that we are British nationalists. Oh, you're just the same. We're just as bad, right? Exactly. That's it. And even one of the three parties, I'm not going to say because I don't want to be too critical of the main pro-UK parties because we do need to, uh, them to get into uh, um, Westminster to, 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 to oust the SNP. Anyway, one of them, one of their um, spokespeople came out with this unbelievable uh, boast that this party is actually the middle ground between Scottish nationalists who want to dis destroy the UK oh, and British nationalists who want to abolish yeah. Holyrood. What? what? What's British nationalist about that? We're saying we've got a failing administration here which needs to be replaced, it has to be uh, fixed or replaced or abolished. That's it. There's nothing British nationalist about that. It's an absolute nonsense. To me, the, the, uh, the uh, mantra is very simple. If you're a Scottish nationalist, you vote SNP. If you're a British nationalist, you vote BNP. That's it. I would never vote BNP. I don't know anybody that. So I, I say to people on, I say to them, pe pe people, well, tell me what uh, British Nationalist Party I support then. Exactly. They go, oh, they might if they're if they're if they're feeling brave, they might try Labour or yeah. uh, or the Tories. You're like, no, I don't think so. They're not nationalist nope. parties. Not, in not interested. They're not def defined by their nationalism. By the national, what they're interested in is get better health, better education, a uh, better economy. That's what defines those parties in different in different right, right, measures, right? right? Yep. And then I say to them, well, tell us more about this imaginary British nationalism that is supposed to be so much better. Uh, or so much worse, I should say, than your actual Scottish nationalism. Right. Right. Well, you know, you're like, you're into nationalism, mate. Own up to it. Quite. And the same thing for these people, uh, you, you know, that are supporting wings and that. You're still a nationalist. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you yeah. might say someone, someone else's other nationalism is worse than you, but still you're not a nationalist nonetheless. And nationalism is what causing this problem. Have some dignity, at least, to say, understand your role in yeah. what has happened in this country. Here. Yep. Okay. Right. Very good. Rant over, or maybe not. For this week. <laughs> <laughs> maybe more. Right. Okay. I mean, if you liked that and you would like some more of that, <laughs> then uh, please do uh, donate to the show because we have a lot of lovely donors who do so. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be really great if we had a few more. So <laughs> if you can, please consider a monthly donation to the show or even a one time would, would help. Well, it's for the whole of the majority, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, anything small or large is most appreciated. Please go to our website and click the button on the right side of the page or leave a super thanks or super sticker on YouTube. Oh, yes, very good. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everyone who has supported the show and anyone who is going to do so in the future. How about that? Next up, Dave is going to be talking about the senior SNP's scripted Butte House reaction to news stories. So we'll see you in just a few seconds. Okay, okay. So, everybody, tonight I just wanted to highlight a very noticeable SNP trend. We'll all have seen this in various forms, but it is, as the little description there just said, it is the uniform SNP social media reaction to any incident or news story that casts the independence movement in either a good light or a bad light. Now, we've all seen it. Oh, sorry. Oh, you yeah, okay? Move you up. Yeah, move you up to the big screen, sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the way this happens is, We've all seen exactly the type of incident. There will be an anti-Labour or an anti-Conservative incident or news story. Something will happen. And it will appear straight off in the front page of the National with a little slant to say, well, of course, this would never happen if you were independent. Immediately, that's followed by SNP commentators, staffers, and a select few senior MPs and MSPs retweeting it, along with an instruction, of course, yes, you must vote SNP. If we're independent, this will never happen again. And it happened this week a number of times, and it's happening more and more as we approach uh, the start of genuine uh, bona fide campaigning uh, ahead of the next election. So firstly, this week we saw the supposed revelation that Labour uh, can't possibly stand up to the Conservatives because Labour is yet to confirm its general election candidate in several seats throughout Scotland. And this appeared in the Press and Journal on Sunday. The headline was... Labour has no candidate in a third of Scottish Westminster seats, including all constituencies currently held by Tories. Interesting, because of course it's factually incorrect. Lisa Cameron is now a Tory, and the Labour Party does indeed have a candidate in 
the seat currently held by Lisa Cameron. Incidentally, that candidate is Jimmy Reid's granddaughter, Joni Reid. So she looks a very okay. plausible candidate. Anyway, it also said, oh, and of course, in the 59 seats, there are 57 seats, guys. Do your research. That might be an idea. But the point of the story is they were trying to say, oh, Labour aren't taking this election seriously. And they're trying to hint that Labour's going to give the Conservative Party a free run. Nonsense. That's not what's going to happen. The seats where Labour is, according to the paper, yet to confirm its candidate, um, include all of the seats won by other pro-UK parties in 2021. And interestingly, these are the seats which all uh, uh, tactical voting guides, including the one I produced, contain the recommendation to vote for the party currently holding those seats. There are 10 of them. Six of them are held by the Conservatives. These are the seats up in Aberdeenshire and down in the borders, places like that. And the Lib Dem ones, you know, Orkney and Shetland, North East Fife, the one in Edinburgh, etc., and the one in Caithness. So not one of these seats is an even remote Labour target. So why mm -hmm. do you bother seeing all this right. stuff? But of course, what happens, guys? So that's, that's the backdrop to the story, and there's a the story. What happens? Out they come. The usual suspects. Uh, the National, of course, do it in the first place. Then Hamza comes out, Chris Law comes out, Mary Hunter comes out. The message is always the same scripted spin. How can Labour claim to stand up to the Tories? They haven't even selected candidates in Tory Hill seats across Scotland. I mean, doesn't it's just the biggest nothing story you'll ever seen. Uh, and, and also ignoring the fact that the election hasn't even been called yet and that the election is almost certainly seven to eight months away. I know some people still think it might be me. Mm -hmm. but, um, but is this is this something you've noticed at all, Mark? Is this a, a well? I mean, it's a, it's just it seems there is increasing desperation. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. So they're trying to grab anything uh, they can. Of course, they're they're masters of straw grabbing. That's, <laughs> where, that's they've still all done doctorates in that, and basically they're trying to say. Well, Labour, oh, the Labour aren't in this race. That's what the message is. Labour yeah. aren't really in this, right? So, well, Hamza Yousaf said that the, his fight was with the Tories, did he not? Yes, exactly. exactly. So, that. so I mean, are they, are they, are they, are they just, it's a kind of combination of deflection as well. So, I'm, but the, I'm actually surprised they've got a common message because, uh, what's his name, Hamza Yousaf has been not using his special advisors and so That's on. And it's very off script, it seems, a lot of the time. So yeah. I'm surprised they've actually got a co kind of coherent message even at this time. Perhaps it's been tightened up a little bit. Although judging by that thing we saw earlier there when he was talking about the hate crimes, he didn't. nobody gave him advice when he was talking about that. I mean, have you ever seen a more <laughs> chilling... Uh, uh, acceptance of authoritarianism than that exactly. but yeah i think there is a lot of this obviously goes on and we this, this trying to tow the party line but what is the party line now there's no not much to say that's true and i mean i think your point is absolutely right my reading of this is hamza has advisors and he listens to them now and again but hamza really fancies himself as an auditor he really thinks he's as intellectual <laughs> or as, as capable uh, of holding a, a an unscripted discussion as say Sturgeon was or Salmon was mm. and he's miles short those guys at least had some political acumen he's got none he doesn't no. have a single political instinct in his body and Kate Ford no. is the same really they just spout first and then think oh, wasn't I really clever there it's ridiculous anyway but what followed this week and this is something Mark and I spoke about uh, earlier was an even more stark illustration of the SNP's obsession with the presentation of a unanimous party line on every issue, albeit leaving aside Hamza's uh, skill for destroying a party line. But there's a gentleman called Mark Blythe. You might have heard of him, guys. He was he was in the uh, I think it was the um, there was a, uh, uh, an event at the weekend which was apparently called the Scottonomics Festival. Um, <laughs> so I just have to laugh at the name. Yes, it's just really exactly, rubbish. Exactly. Now, Mark Blythe <laughs> is a former advisor to the SNP government, and he is now additionally a professor of economics at the very prestigious Brown University. Mm. Uh, it's Ivy League, isn't it? Exactly right. It's like Harvard. And, um, yeah. So anyway, he was invited to this event, uh, and this event is described as Scotland's biggest festival of economics, demystifying Scotland's economy. <laughs> and I would miss that one, guys. <laughs> oh, I one. Anyway, so Mark appeared in a session laying into MMT, which is modern monetary theory, and tearing apart the totally fictitious Scottish nationalist economic plan for independence. And he said pl plenty of stuff. Do you have the clip there, Mark? Yeah, I do have the clip here. Let's try it. Three minutes comparator case then it's ireland right so let's think about ireland the problem with small open economies that are poor is that they're poor and what that means is you don't have enough savings or enough sort of indigenous capital to invest at scale to get out of being poor so yeah. how do you solve that problem how did ireland solve that problem well for 50 years they didn't 
they basically had the Catholic Taliban running the place. And it was their biggest export in the 1960s was Irish laborers to London. So it was only in the 1970s and 1980s that they began to go, hang on a minute, what have we got a comparative advantage in? How about taxes? What else have we got? We've got relatively skilled people in a reasonable university sector. Why don't we invest in that? And then we can play the whole Boston connection and get a shit ton of American money to come in here. And we'll use ourselves as the entrepot for getting into Europe. That's what they did. They're now a very rich society. Here's, here's the thing. It took them another 40 years. So it's a very long road to do these things. It doesn't happen overnight. Well, that's just one of the things you saw in the other clip, I think, was which is a bit longer, was the one where he just he told them they were just stop. What was, the, what was that the thing, right? He said, stop doing this. You cannot do this. You don't have the resources. Exactly right. And he was saying, okay, if, even if you are independent and you're printing your own pound notes or whatever they are, that doesn't make you anything different than, say, Argentina, which is bankrupt. So he, he, what he was saying was permanently sensible. Scotland's not Ireland. Scotland, neither is it Denmark. The fact that you know somebody who's Danish is Miss World doesn't mean that Senga down the road can be Miss World because she's got two legs also. It just doesn't work, you know. So, and, the <laughs> okay. point, and remember, this guy is a nationalist, and he was tearing apart. Yeah, I don't understand that. He's a, why, he's a nationalist. Why is he not? I don't get it. I really don't get it. Why is he a nationalist when he completely demolishes this, the, the, this, the case for economic case for independence? It's Indeed, and that's exactly what he did. But then, as soon as this broke, of course, two things happened. First off, guys like me spread this and said, okay, well, this is proving what we've all said, guys. Even your top economist knows that you don't have a case for independence. Forget this idea of your currency, because he laid into the idea of currency and said how there'd be a run in the currency. Suddenly, everything would be worth a fraction of what it was the night before, which is exactly what would happen if, if the yeah. SNP did to give them its own currency. But then in came the SNP spin machine that I mentioned earlier. Firstly, Mark himself appeared in the Dundee Courier saying, oh, no, no, I wasn't demolishing the case for independence. Right, that's it. I'm done with Scotland. I've had enough. Done. And he yeah. said, my words have just been weaponized and turned into a wholesale attack on independence. No, what actually, Mark, what we saw was a video clip of your actual words in which you yourself destroyed <laughs> the case for independence. So if you didn't want to see it... Maybe well, maybe he wasn't saying it's destroyed the case for independence. Maybe he was just saying... You know, we can be independent, but it's going yeah. to take us about 80 years of exactly. extreme I'm suffering and, and, you know, and, and I don't, being extremely I don't understand, poor. I don't understand why any nationalist would say that because he knows that that destroys the case. Because maybe he's, he's a bigger economist than he is a nationalist. That could and, be. And, and well, he also, he lives that, in America yeah. and, you know, it's maybe he's somewhat divorced from the reality of what's happening on the ground here. Yeah. And again, another person who perhaps likes the idea of nationalism but doesn't understand really where it leads to. And you would think, right. I mean, he probably studies capitalism and understands the outcomes of capitalism and the effects of it, or socialism, these effects of that. But nationalism is similar, and you have similar, it ends up in the same place all the, mm. all the time. It's, it's not true. complicated to understand. Well, I have to say, guys, I am not feeling demystified. Well, I mean, you <laughs> promised me I would be, you would demystify the, the Scottish <laughs> well, economics of independence and I'm not feeling demystified. I think he's pretty much uh, clarified for me that the fact that this, this case for independence doesn't exist. But of course, what we saw then, as soon as Mark came out saying how outraged he was, you got the usual suspects appearing, pretending that Mark hadn't really said, and certainly didn't mean what he actually had said. And even, even if he had, he was only starting a debate. So today we saw Ross Greer piping up in a different story saying, oh, well, of course, this means we've got to debate for stuff more. Because as Mark Blind's experience this weekend proved any interesting comment is distorted and misreported before it has a chance to spark real debate. <laughs> right. Yes, so don't if, believe if that. The, don't the, believe the words coming out of The party's final command <laughs> exactly. was right. do not believe the evidence of your own eyes. And exactly. Just... Orwellian nonsense. All reminiscent of Debbie Sridhar saying, we must get children back to school. We must accelerate it. Sturgeon that day said, no, we shouldn't. We can't. And then Sridhar said, she's absolutely right. We shouldn't do it. I'm totally aligned with her. Oh, guys, seriously. <laughs> do you ever listen to yourselves, you people? Seriously. So afterwards, you get pro independent independence figures, when any anything this happens, you'll get pro-independence figures are pressured to say, you better say you didn't really mean that. Go on, go and say something, go on. And they come out and say some totally contradictory nonsense, which just completely 
makes them look like. I, I just, I, I can't go over this thing. They invite the guy Indeed. as as their the, the 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 one of the keynote speakers, I think, right. for the thing. And then when he tells them what they don't want to hear, yep. they basically say, um, "Oh, well, didn't say well, that. You didn't say that. No, no, no. Yeah, he didn't say that. No. But why did they invite him in the first? And it was actually apparently it was recorded. It was recorded exactly. And then he right. told, I didn't say that at all. That's no, no, no. That's not what I say. And then I, I, not, so they, they had it in advance. Right? That's what I mean, right? So if they saw that in advance, why did they ever put why, it why up? Why invite him? Yeah, exactly. Maybe they thought that the, the brilliance of the other speakers would uh, overwhelm well, him. Maybe that's uh, Leslie Riddick or talking about <laughs> economics. I don't think so. so well, maybe they don't even understand what he's saying. <laughs> it could be. Maybe he, he agreed with them. I don't know. Goodness well, I mean, they're th they're he's thinking got, it's good news. World leading economist says it's crap. And you know, a bunch of people who don't are not economists are like, oh my god, he's he's yeah. telling lies. Yeah. Okay. Next up, <laughs> very good, good segment there, David. <laughs> um, but we are having fun tonight with you all watching the show. And again, we get big numbers uh, watching. So thank you all for telling your friends and letting everyone know that uh, this is the only place in Scotland where we have this kind of discussion against nationalism and the idiocy of uh, the SNP, ALBA, and all these other the Greens. hangers on. Oh, yeah, Greens as well. Yeah. Right. Mary's going to be talking about business sentiment in Scotland or the lack of it. Just a second. Well, this kind of follows on from the, I guess, the economic argument that uh, David was talking about in the last segment. Uh, in a recent survey of Scottish business directors and leaders by the Institute of Directors in Scotland, so, I mean, very formal, uh, more than four-fifths, and for those that can count, that's more than 80%, are concerned about the growing difference in income tax between Scotland and the rest of the UK. Right. And further moves to increase income tax for higher earners in Scotland were announced in the Scottish budget in December, if you remember. Yep. So they're going to be creating a new advanced band of income tax, which will apply on incomes between 75,000 and 125,000, and it'll be set at what? 45p. <laughs> now, those are quite, I, I mean, those are quite high incomes. If you earn between 75,000 and 125,000, that's a lot of money. Right. Is that individual or is it? Is it individually, right, yeah. Okay. Um, but you have to remember, you know, this would be people like maybe doctors, dentists, like professionals, uh, business people who are managing companies and big organisations and so on. And basically they're getting hammered in Scotland for tax. And the top rate of income tax will increase by one pence to 48 pence in the, the, this tax year. Right. So asked in a survey oh, how much of a concern this income tax divergence in Scotland is for them, over half said it was a serious concern and more than a quarter said it was a slight concern. So if you put those together, basically you've got three quarters of these business directors and managers are concerned. Only 14% said it was of no concern. And the introduction of this new tax ban this year will make things even more difficult for them. So the leaders clearly see that Scotland's tax re regime as yet, and it's, a, it's basically it's a barrier to attracting and retaining talent yeah. and encouraging investment. And we've talked about this before, um, but this is the uh, this is the first time I've actually seen it by the you know the Institute of uh, Directors, um, and they're telling the government very clearly, look, we're really concerned about this, and this is making it more difficult to hire and retain, you know, talented staff, people who get paid more money um, and there's a big shortage in Scotland as we know of of dentists and, and doctors and, and senior managers and so on um, I don't know it, it's, it's, it's going to lead to a kind of a, a brain drain in Scotland well, I think the brain has been drained <laughs> <laughs> already if Hamza Yusuf is any indication <laughs> the brain has drained uh, certainly but I mean come on whoever came up with this idea that you know we should have different tax bans across the country now fair enough to have a different council tax rate because that's your local stuff mm. but to have a different in income tax rate across the country that should be a, I mean that's the thing that an S, there should be an S35 on basically right. there should be no reason for any person in another part of the country to be taxed more than just because they're across this uh, bo this border right and now we've got this all these disparities uh, and it's it's just a nightmare for people. I mean, I suppose it might be a boon to accountants and and people like that who are trying to figure it out. But if you're if you're thinking of moving here, 
then you're not going to do it, or at least you, it's going to be a question. Scotland is now known as a high tax country, and if you, because they always try to say, oh, but people won't move away, people won't um, leave the country. But a lot of people just won't come to the country. And I'll tell you what, if I was earning a lot of money, I'd be parking my money offshore as well. Everyone does that. That's what they want to do. Because, you know, you don't want people at Humza Yusuf misspending it on right. ferries and nonsense and all the bullshit and bike lanes and what have you. That's what people just do. so much waste. And it's so easy to move. I mean, that's yeah. the other thing. It's not difficult in this day and age to move. So, well, I mean, to move to England or Wales well, or anyway, you can move Northern anywhere. Ireland. Well, it's certainly right. not difficult to move money. That's the thing. And you can well, find money. schemes yeah. to... to uh, to minimise whatever your uh, increased tax liability will be, and everybody knows that, and this is what's been told to them. But well, they, they, of course, let's not forget the SNP wants to have this headline that more people in Scotland pay less tax than anywhere else, which means yeah, people who earn up to twenty thousand pounds pay a penny less tax than their compatriots in England or whatever it is. But everybody else pays more, so. much more. Exactly, right. much significantly more. Because one of the problems is when you introduce something like allowing, you know holiday to set higher taxes or to set ta you know to set different taxes it's not like they're going to set them lower okay. they're only we, ever going to be higher well, it was, it was, and they're going to keep increasing but it as was well. originally set up that way that that, that they could uh, there was option to uh, add one pence i think it was in the, in the original devolution uh, okay. uh, agreement and it was all add it was never to take it off because the because then the, the the rest of the uk would be like well well you know, we, we don't want that because, you know, people will go there because well, taxes are better, Scotland. right? And yeah. that's the thing. we don't need this kind of tax competition in a small island, basically. No. Well, just um, following on, I know we're running out of time here, guys, but um, in this same poll by the Institute of Directors, more than three quarters of the business of their members in Scotland believe the Scottish Parliament hasn't paid sufficient attention to growing the economy since it was reconvened <laughs> in 1999. Yes, well, so three quarters of them are basically saying that the Scottish government don't know how to grow the economy. And they're well, not we know that. I mean, there right people things. like Ross Greer who are wagging the tail of the Scottish government, basically yeah. saying, you know, hate we hate landlords, we don't want economic growth, yeah. and we don't want you moving around the country. country. No. It's just absolutely terrible. And actually, one of the things that came out of the thing I watched last night, which was about the low traffic networks and so on, was that you need transport for economic growth. And they're trying to close it down. Yeah. I mean, that's, is it any surprise, really? And um, when they were asked about this new deal for business announced by Humza Yousaf in spring last year, when he'd just become the, the first minister, they asked if it helped improve relations engagement between Scottish business and the Scottish government. 7% of respondents said yes. 7%. Uh, well, 43% said no. <laughs> and the remainder, which would be 50%, we're not sure. So I think that basically tells us that most of them don't even know what the new deal for business is. This terms of new, new deal, deal for business. For business. Don't I don't actually, what is this new deal for business? Nobody knows. It doesn't matter any because whatever they would say, they don't do. Exactly. It doesn't make any difference. And nobody, there's not a person who has any business experience in there. I don't think so. We talk about this so much. Well, I think the show. only thing they are good at is growing the welfare state. Well, they yes. haven't a clue what GDP is or how to grow the economy. No. I know. Let's move on. <laughs> <Maybe not. laughs> Things you can do to support the show. You can make a donation to the Majority's 2024 crowdfunder. And we talked about that earlier. Please do so. That would be great. Um, you can buy a T-shirt or a mug, abolish Hollywood, or the Majority T-shirts, or uh, Majority mugs, mouse mats, all loads of stuff uh, in there. You can, of course, subscribe to the show on YouTube, which helps us. And drop a like. We need the likes. The likes really work for us, by the way. It's really great. And you can tell all your friends about us, and you can do all of the above, which makes us feel really appreciated. Underline exclamation mark. <laughs> Coming up. It is the moment you have all been waiting for. It is the highlight of the week. It is Zoomer of the Week. Yay! Right, so David, first of all, I'm going to make an observation. You know that each week Mary wins. It happens often, yes. Chat. And who controls those chat comments? <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure. Sure. I'd, like to, I'd like to point out that this is it, this is uh, show 107, and it's taking you 107 <laughs> episodes to actually <laughs> figure this one out. Yes, well, I, you know, last week I was like, wait a minute, I've got the best one here, and somehow the, right. the popular vote went for you, Mary. Right. I don't, I'm not saying it's rigged. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
But there's Maybe. something fishy going on. She here. who controls the buttons. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, I'll be watching you. Watching, watching, watching. Well, no. Yeah, yeah, on you go then. On you go. <laughs> right, anyway. I win fair and square. Well, because this week I have the ultimate Zoomers. The Scottish resistance. Oh, yes. <laughs> Remember the Scottish resistance from the previous highlights. Uh, they reported an international war crime. I want to report an international war crime. <laughs> at the local police at station. The local police station. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brilliant. As you do. <laughs> okay, you've won oh, already. Uh, yes. <laughs> and not being able to set fire to the Union flag on Arthur's seat. <laughs> <laughs> because the fires and if flags are made of non-flammable material. <laughs> okay, or being told to beat it by old ladies when they try to protest against Tonic's tea cakes. Now, I mean, who in the right mind <laughs> wants to protest against Tonic's tea cakes? They're a national treasure. <laughs> but these old ladies are were also the tonics uh, workers, pushing yeah. them out of the way were uh, doing the same. But this week they have a new thing. Uh, they were back leading a protest of possibly uh, six people, maybe, um, against the Redcoat Cafe. And it's not because they didn't like the scones, but it's previously reported because of the name itself. So let's have a wee listen. The Redcoat's reputation is deplorable, and we want them to remove that Redcoat Cafe inside that castle. <laughs> This is the Scottish resistance! We will never give up the fight for Scotland's freedom! Never! <laughs> Just to say to all tourists and all people who have been to the Red Coat Cafe is named after the British soldiers that went into the Highlands in the 18th and 19th centuries and massacred, massacred men, women and children. That having a cafe by the name of the Red Coat Cafe is an insult to the people of Scotland. And what we are saying is, change the name! Boycott the cafe! Good. Can I just get our quick word? Yes. And see how we're at it! Get that butcher's apron taken down for the flagpole! In Scotland, you're in! Oh, some quality entertainment there uh, from the Scottish Resistance. Um, oh, you're mention, trying hard this week. should mention hard. at this time, watch the comments, Mary. We should mention this time that the Red Coat Cafe is part of a pair with the Jacobite Cafe at yeah, the same quite. locations. So maybe we should see something where the, where people on our side go there and protest the Jacobite Cafe. But the point is that it doesn't really matter because the red coats were actually made up of lone Scots, the Scots fighting Scots, as we discussed before, and we don't need to go there again. Is this a hate crime against cafes? That's what <laughs> I would like to know. Certainly a crime against well, common sense. Sean Geddes, he doesn't agree with you, Mark. He says that I win against <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I haven't you, even done mine yet. It's rigged. Anyway, who gets up in the morning and says, says "Guess what? I'm going to protest a cafe." <laughs> must do that. Test yeah. Costa to bring prices they get down. Get themselves all organised. You know, that's don't what they? we want. What cheaper prices at Costa? Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. no that's good. More, more variety. Uh, oh, you've anyway. got somebody say original smoothie says Mark oh. wins. Ooh, anyway, so for all that nonsense, the Scottish resistance. <laughs> well, as my are my zoomers of the week. Mm. There we go, Neil. Well done. Wrong candidate. Very good. <laughs> right. Okay. Coming up next is going to be David. Is it David? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So. Okay, mine is, I have to say, uh, up front is not uh, remotely as strong. My nomination for Zuma this week is Jerry Hassan. Most of you who are on Twitter will have seen Jerry. He's a fervent Scottish nationalist, plus a self-styled writer, commentator, academic, and professor of social change. Uh, well. I'm a professor of social change. I really do not know, <laughs> don't really want to know either, I don't think. Anyway, Jerry became very annoyed this week when the SNP's use of populist language was likened to Donald Trump's uh. approach to politics. Now, this made Jerry furious. How dare you liken the SNP to Trump and make America great again? Oh, he was so angry. So he came out with a, an illustration to prove his point. And this was Jerry's uh, method of proving that the SNP is nothing like Trump. The basic definition of populism is that it sees society as two groups, the pure people versus the corrupt elite. 
That sounds like the most accurate description of the SNP I've ever heard. <laughs> Similarly to Jerry, this is him disproving the idea. So, oh, well done, Jerry. Anyway, but of course, what Jerry is usually found doing, as he did last night, Julie on cue, is to bemoan the fact that Scotland football matches are not uh, habitually uh, aired on free to view TV channels. Now, last night, I know it was oh, big, one of the big. Uh, um, it's a human right, a human to, right. Get, to get free Scottish. Um, Exactly. To get Scotland Scottish stuff. Yeah. I want free TV. Yeah, so I want. Right. Yeah. But luckily, last night Jerry's luck was in because Scotland played Northern Ireland at Hamden and the game was broadcast on BBC Scotland. So oh. that's great. But of course, Jerry produced his standard one nonetheless. He said, this is far better than the awful Via Play, which is the pay-per-view channel, Swedish channel, that bought the broadcast rights to Scotland games. Because that's how it happens, guys, for those of you who don't know. Scotland games are screened by the TV company, which bids the largest amount and uh, through UEFA. I mean, and, it's the uh, free market, is that exactly. what? That's yeah. what happens, guys. BBC could bid more. Uh, BBC Scotland could bid more tomorrow. Anyway, and as Jerry finished off, he said, we need to get the Scottish team on free to air. Brilliant. And guess what happened last night? Scotland lost 1-0 at home to Northern Ireland. It took them about 90 minutes to get a shot on target. So oddly, Jerry hasn't even mentioned his favourite subject today. I wonder why. Sour grapes, maybe. So anyway, for a, a, a shocking lack of self-awareness and for making a big issue of a complete non-event, as usual, Jerry is my Zoomer of the Week. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed he didn't use his full name, uh, David. His, his full name is Jerry, I'm not a nationalist. Oh, exactly right. He's not a nationalist. He just believes in Scottish independence and breaking up. Yeah, he just He's such a whiner. I mean, before we even started the majority, I was following and, and I actually put a poll up that said, who is the most annoying whiner in the whole of Scotland? <laughs> and I didn't, at that time, I didn't get many um, responses, I have to say, because Maybe we hadn't started. Again. But, mm, no, I don't want to just bring attention to more whining anyway. Anyway, uh, it's, it's it's sad to see that kind of thing. And yeah. It really is very sad. A worthy contestant, in my opinion, um, uh, David. Yeah. Per perhaps Mary will cancel those comments, you know, supporting you. Know. Oh, <laughs> right, okay, Mary, it's you, is up now. Okay, well, as usual, I have a brilliant, brilliant uh, Zoomer of the Week. My Zoomer of the Week is Gillian Sturgeon. Oh, the, that's quite a hard competition. It definitely. To say. I'm no, no, up worries. against the Scottish <laughs> resistance. I, I, don't, I have to say, I don't know. I think we'll leave it to the, to the viewers to decide. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Gillian Sturgeon, the unhinged wacko sister of disgraced former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. Sister Jill, now this isn't actually funny, this part, she leaked the news of Princess Kate having cancer about 25 minutes before the official announcement by Kate herself. Oh, but I thought she was a clairvoyant or something like that. Well, maybe she'd seen it in her crystal ball. I mean, that's the only excuse she's got, basically. She's to Have you I seen all the things that she sells online? Oh, all I the pills know. and potions yeah. and, uh, I don't know, she's a, yeah, she's selling a modern day witch. She's selling dreams, Mary. Dreams. Yeah. <laughs> so the story is that the official announcement was released by Kensington Palace to the World's Press at 5.59 p.m. You can see it on the um, on Kate's thing yourself. Um, on last Friday, on March 20th. 22nd, but people were already making copies of Jill Sturgeon's Facebook post at 5.47pm, yep. yep. 12 minutes before that, and her post had already been up and getting comments for about quarter of an hour. Right. People were saying, I haven't seen that anywhere on the news, how do you, you know How do you know this? But Jill was so keen to spread the gossip, or spill the tea as they say, that she couldn't, or the tea leaves, that she couldn't keep her big warbling trap shut. <laughs> yeah. But the big question is, who told Jill? Ah. Can you guys, can you think of anyone that might have, that she might know, that might have told her, you know, some uh, Privy Council uh, information? I don't know. Indeed, it's, it's a mystery. We may never know. It's one of life's great imponderables, isn't it, really? No. Well, totally unrelated, but I think Jill's blabbing shows that Nicola Sturgeon can't be trusted with state secrets. Well, she can't. Maybe she did that thing with, uh, uh, what's what was on the Casia, Dugdale. She yeah. revealed the private contents of a private conversation. That's right. Uh, and, you know, and it's like... And she, and she was always running to announce all the, during COVID, oh, yeah. all the, sweet, sweet you wife, know, the new she? things. So, There's one slight addition to this story, actually, which makes it even more uh, convincing, if you like. She had put on her Facebook, she's always on Facebook, Jalen Sturgeon, um, the Get Will Soon Princess Kate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, and somebody said, what is it? It's cancer. And somebody said, there's no news that that's the case. And Jalen Sturgeon said, yeah, just wait till 6 p.m. though. 
Now, Kate's update wasn't broadcast, it wasn't advertised. Nobody knew she was going to speak. Yeah, she was good. Not yeah. only did, did Jill know what the diagnosis was, she knew when the update was. Now, Jill Sturgeon isn't going to guess that. Ah, that's very good. Well, if she knew that the announcement, the official announcement was being being made at six o'clock, yep. then that means that she did this deliberately. Absolutely. Mm. It's not like, oh, it was, I didn't realise it hadn't yes. been announced. She she knew it was at six o'clock. So she was so, she was so anxious to get... You know, everybody say, "Oh, how, you know, how do you know this to her?" That she actually did it very yep. deliberately. Yep, indeed. Very um, but basically, you know, with Nicola Sturgeon, if she if she's going to blab out confidential, top secret information to her foghorn mouth sister, yeah. then you know she can't be trusted with any information. Then she should be taken off the Privy Council. Yes. Well, now, I'm not absolutely sure that she's on the Privy Council because no. I did look it up today on Wikipedia and it said that she was only on the Privy Council to 2023. But oh. everybody else seems to think that she is on the Privy Council. Uh, so. Why is Alex Salmon still on I don't on know. Well, yeah, uh, well, well, we know who would definitely be still on it and that's um, the, the, uh, the man who Nicholas Sturgeon keeps telling us is doing a fantastic job as first oh, man. Yeah, who, so. who knows? Yes, she's, a, yes, she's a very um, bizarre character. She's got some fame because of her sister's position and it seems yeah. desperate to abuse it as yeah. much as possible. Um, so it's very weird. She is, seems a real attention seeker, as some of people pointed out here in the comments. Just absolutely terrible. Right. Okay, well, that, this is... Well, this where's is, where's all the ones saying that I've I should win? Yeah. I know. Well, I put them all up. On, on, I put on. them all up while you were doing your thing. Oh no! Someone said. Oh no! I'm not putting that one up. It says. Oh, that, oh, oh, oh. It says that March should win. So I'm not putting. Oh, that yeah. up. Yeah. Not yeah. Yes. <laughs> right, um, right, David. You have choice. You have the choice of three nominations. Right. Okay. Oh. I have to say three complete non-entities tonight, but nonetheless strong contenders. I would say. Um, uh, I would say Jerry Hatan is just like. We know what Jerry has signed. He'll be he'll be on again. Yeah. Well, it will be, and you know how uh, uh, you know how uh, um, influenced I am by uh, public opinion. Look what happens here. It's pretty much straight down the line between Mark and Mary. Mary's traditionally, as always, comes up with a very strong candidate. But tonight, for pure unadulterated Zoomerism and for the absolute essence of Zoomerism, it has to be the Scottish Resistance guys. It has oh, to be Resistance is futile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to put a lot of effort into winning that one. <laughs> okay, got okay, that was good. Right. Well definitely done. Work, definitely, yeah. I, we're definitely a winner <laughs> there. That's the only of, thing they'll ever win, isn't it? <laughs> a bunch of nutters um, <laughs> trying to boycott a cafe, as you do. You get up in the morning, yeah, I think I'll go and boycott a cafe today. Not Greg's, <laughs> not Greg's, of course. Right. I, mean, I like to go to Greg's and get some sort of... Their lives have <laughs> meaning, Mark. Sort of, yes. Well, it's true. Whatever gives you floats your boat, as it were. Okay, or doesn't float your boat in the case of the fairies. We are so happy to have you all with us on the show every week on Scotland's number one politics chat. Thought of the week is a reminder. The SNP and all these authoritarian laws, Hamza Yusuf and the rest are just symptoms. And it will all certainly come back again if we don't get rid of the disease that is Scottish nationalism, a failed experiment that has caused so much division and strife. Everything comes from that, and we look forward to beating it with you. So thank you all for your support. Uh, please do drop a like, and we will see you all next week. Huge thanks to Mary and also to David. Thank well. you, everyone. Thanks for all the comments. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much indeed for tuning in. See you next week. Good night.